Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the GPD Win 2 gaming handheld PC, or at least a prototype thereof. This is a demo unit that was sent to me for testing purposes, and in another video I took a look at how Linux runs on it, but really what I did is I looked at Fedora 27, uh, which is a specific Linux distribution. And I figured a lot of people who want to run Linux on a computer like this are probably looking at Ubuntu, so it's time for another video. So I've got Ubuntu 17.10 installed or loaded up here on a flash drive. I'm just going to go ahead and plug that into the back and then show you the boot process and talk a little bit about what you can and cannot do, at least currently, at least with this prototype. Uh, it's possible that different hardware versions might be a little bit different. But first thing we're going to do is press the power button and then just sort of hammer on the escape key. You can also use the delete key, but I find escape in the upper left corner just a little bit easier to, uh, to hit. And from here, the screen is sideways. And that's because it's basically a six inch smartphone screen that's uh, put onto a laptop style device here. But we can use the arrow keys to navigate to save and exit. Go down to the bottom and choose the USB disk from the boot options under boot override. Uh, it'll be called something different depending on what your drive is, but in this case it's USB disk 2.0 PMAP. And I'm gonna hit enter and choose the Try Ubuntu without installing. You could install it to local storage, but because not everything works perfectly out of the box, I just didn't want to spend the time doing that. So we're running from a flash drive here instead, which is sort of how you can try it, make sure everything works before installing it. I don't know if you heard that, there was a little click that uh, the speakers tend to pop when you're uh, booting. Also when you put the computer to sleep for some reason under Ubuntu. Um, anyways, out of the box, you can see that again, the screen is still sideways. That's not the case when you're booting into Windows. And I think if you installed this to local storage, that wouldn't be the case either. But basically everything else, well, almost everything else works. So you can see that the screen brightness adjuster uh, keyboard shortcuts work, the volume works and the mouse mode works. So I can use the right analog stick to move a cursor and the left and right shoulder buttons to click. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is make the screen go the right side up by opening the display settings, going to orientation. We're gonna choose portrait left and then the apply button isn't actually on the screen, so we need to drag until we see it. And that should do the trick. Keep changes. All right, so now we've got the screen set up properly. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is probably connect to the internet. Wi-Fi not connected, but it finds Wi-Fi networks pretty easily. So let's go ahead and connect to my home network. It uh, detects both 5G and 2.4G. And after my password is entered, you can see that we are now connected. So we're online. We can go ahead and open up the Ubuntu Software Center. And from here, let's go ahead and make sure that we have different sources enabled. And I'm going to go ahead and close that for now actually and open the terminal window instead. All right, so what we're doing is downloading and installing Super Tux Cart, and I'm just going to let that run in the background. And that's so that I can show you a 3D game uh, functioning. But while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and open Firefox. So 
So, you know, for the most part, things work the way that you would expect them to work, other than the, uh, the lighting in here, which I'm realizing makes everything look kind of dark when we've got a white background. Um, so I'm using mouse mode, and the reason I'm doing that instead of reaching up and touching the display is because the touch screen is not functioning on my demo unit. Uh, this is a problem that might be unique to the version of the pro or the prototype that I received. I have reached out and communicated with a couple of other testers who have virtually identical software, yeah, software and hardware. And while the touchscreen and everything else works just fine for me under Windows, when I boot pretty much any Linux distribution, I haven't been able to get it to work properly. Um, other people with similar hardware revisions don't seem to have that problem. They've been able to, um, I'm typing wrong here, they've been able to get the touchscreen to work under Linux. So I can't say for certain if this is a problem that's unique to this hardware, if it's something that's going to be um, affecting all users or just some users, if it's a prototype issue, if it's something that'll be resolved by the time this is released to the public, um, there's really kind of no way for me to know that for certain. What I can say though, is that audio works, video works, 3D graphics works. Um, And so the out of the box experience is actually pretty good uh, for a device that's not yet released. It's got an Intel Core M3 uh, Kaby Lake processor, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage. It's a pretty nice little computer that sells for, uh, well, about $650 during pre-orders during an Indiegogo campaign. It's gonna sell for about $700 later. And um, for the most part, it works fine out of the box with Linux. There might be some tweaking that's necessary for it to work better. Um, so I don't know, again, if it's a prototype issue or if it's something that uh, some users might have problems with when it actually ships in terms of being able to get that touchscreen to work. But it's um, off to a fairly decent start. Now, the other thing besides the touchscreen that you might have issues with uh, could be the gamepad. So I'll show you. Like I said, we installed this in the background. Let's just say no for now. And there's a switch here, which is a little hard to see right now in this lighting, but there's a switch here that lets you uh, toggle between mouse mode and um, gamepad mode. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in mouse mode for a second here just to show you that The game loads up okay. And 3D plays okay. But if I switch over to gamepad mode, I can't really do anything. Um, it also occurs to me that it's taking a while to go through this because I entered story mode instead of quick play. Let's go ahead and close this and try again. From here, I want to try and get to the options, and I'm going to go ahead and toggle over to gamepad mode, and really nothing works. I can't navigate, I can't do anything, so I'm going to switch back to mouse mode and go over here to the control settings, and it says keyboard. So we've got the keyboard options, but that's all we got. We can try adding a device doesn't see any other devices. And again, if I switch over here, nothing's really happening. 
Now with some games, you can sort of use keyboard controls anyway. So for instance, in this particular game, you can use the arrow keys to navigate, um, but you could also go into the keyboard settings and say, instead of using left to steer, let's go to the D-pad, which again, lighting problems here, um, but we can go to the D-pad and say, let's assign left. And what it actually shows is right, or uh, A, because that triggers sort of the AWSD keys. So for steering right, let's say, steer right. For accelerate, I'm going to choose the A button. And for brake, I'm going to choose the B button. Now, when I go back to the game, I should be able to hmm. now apparently I chose Y instead of B. <laughs> but now I can play. Except I forgot to pick it back. Oops, there we go. So we've got 3D graphics working, uh, we've got the mouse mode working, we've got the keyboard working, we've got audio working. Um, so the only things that you're that I'm really having trouble with would be the um, touchpad and the or uh, the gamepad and the touchscreen. Uh, another thing that's a little bit quirky though is sleep. So if I were to try to close the lid, which you would think would put the computer to sleep, if you look, that screen is staying on all the way. So nothing's really happening here. Now I've heard from some other users that after a while, if you sort of leave it that way, that the screen will turn off and you'll hear a sort of clicking noise. And when it comes back on, you get graphics glitches. I haven't noticed that, but again, it seems that there's something a little bit different about the prototype that I'm testing. Um, you can just say you want to use the regular suspend option. So that'll turn the screen off. and you get that sort of loud clicking noise when it happens. But if you do it manually that way, you can resume. So the main thing is to remember if you are going to use Ubuntu, um, and this is also true for Fedora and some other things that I've tried, um, that you can put it to sleep, you just need to do it manually instead of closing the lid. Um, so again, that's the out of the box experience. It's possible that with some tweaking, people might be able to get the touchscreen to work better, might be able to get the gamepad to work better. And in fact, it might be that some of these problems are unique to the demo unit that I'm testing. Um, I have heard reports from other people with nearly identical hardware saying that the gamepad and the touchscreen work. Everybody seems to be having the same sorts of issues with sleep, which is not that it doesn't work, it's just that you need to, uh, to enter it manually. But this is on sort of day one. This is with a prototype of the device. It's not available uh, to a large number of people yet. The hardware could be different by the time it's finalized. And once there are more people uh, testing it and trying to get uh, Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, other Linux distributions uh, supported, it's possible that we could see some fixes. That said, because of the fact that I have run into some issues on this prototype and it should be the same hardware as some other prototypes that are said to work better, um, it's possible that there might be some discrepancies between the hardware that would prevent it from working uh, properly one under Linux on different machines. I've had no problems using Windows 10 on this computer. Everything sort of works perfectly out of the box, uh, including the touchscreen, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, audio, 3D graphics, and everything. Um, my only real complaint is that the fan noise is kind of loud and that the computer's a little bit on the expensive side for somebody who's not super into gaming. Um, and you know, I think if you if you want something that's going to be able to play games on Linux, you're probably going to want the touchpad to work or the gamepad to work. Um, but if you're looking for something that's just sort of a handheld computer that can run Ubuntu, that can run other operating systems, this can do it. And as I mentioned, I've tested it with Fedora, with Ubuntu, with several different versions of Ubuntu, including uh, 16.04, Zubuntu, Lubuntu. I tried Debian 9.3. Um, all of these load just fine. Uh, Linux Mint 17.3. Um, there's some discrepancy. Sometimes the keyboard shortcuts for volume and brightness work in one operating system and not the others. But for the most part, this is a pretty Linux-friendly device, and that might not be 
too surprising because it's based on hardware that's not particularly uncommon. It's got the Core M3 Cappy Lake processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. Um, and, you know, it's basically just a little computer that happens to be able to run a wide variety of operating systems in addition to the Windows 10 software that it ships with. So I just wanted to do this video showing what it looks like with Ubuntu as sort of a complement to my uh, previous Linux video. You can find more videos about the performance under Windows 10, gaming performance, fan noise, uh, what it looks like when you take it apart. And, um, you know, there's some other interesting things that you could do here. If you did install the operating system to the storage, you could make it a dual boot system that runs both Windows and Linux. The uh, SSD is relatively easy to take out. So if you wanted to, you could uh, upgrade the storage so that you have more room for lots of applications, games, and multiple operating systems on the same uh, SSD if 120 gig gigabytes is not enough for you. Or you could even install different operating systems on different SSDs because all it takes is removing one screw to get that SSD out. And you can check out my other videos to see how you would do that. So overall, it's a pretty interesting device. And uh, it's not just an interesting device for people who are interested in Windows 10 gaming, but also for other things such as running Ubuntu uh, 1710. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and a look at Ubuntu 17.10 on the GPD Win 2.